Hi, everyone. Just wanted to welcome you to another webinar hosted by Percuto. My name is Jordan, and I'm the Marketing Operations Manager for Percuto. I'll be hosting today. Before we jump into it, uh, just a couple quick notes. Uh, we will be taking a recording of today's presentation um, and send that out to everyone after the talk um, along with the slides, so no need to take uh, any notes if you don't want to. Um, if you have any questions as our speakers are talking today, please click on the chat or question um, button on the right-hand side of your screen, um, type it in there, and we'll have a Q&A at the end, hopefully have time to get to all of your questions. Um, for those of you not familiar with Percuto, uh, we help leading brands orchestrate memorable customer experiences through flawless marketing operations. Um, we have employees throughout the world uh, headquartered here in North America, in Montreal specifically, and we're partners with, of course, Marketo Adobe Visible and Microsoft. Uh, as for our speakers today, um, we've got two experts with us, uh, Hilary German and Chelsea Spinett. Chelsea is a Marketo certified consultant with a 10-year background in marketing, ranging from award-winning public relations work to all aspects of digital marketing. And she's been a Marketo admin since 2015. Hillary, on the other hand, is a senior consultant here at Percuto. Uh, she not only has her MCE, but also her MCSA and an MBA in marketing. She's a jack of all trades, creative and entrepreneurial marketer turned consultant with a background in digital marketing, communications, and graphic design. Those are our two expert speakers. And without further ado, I'll turn the presentation over to you now, Hillary. Thanks, Jordan. Oops, and I'll just pull up the presentation here. All right, so you may be wondering, is there a symbolic meaning of looking at this picture of this roller coaster? And there is. So thanks for joining today in this webinar where we'll talk about implementing Marketo. For some people, Implementing Marketo is quite a ride with many ups and downs, but good news for you and, and anyone watching this webinar is that following our phased approach and implementing Marketo with an agency, this roller coaster ride can be successful and fun. So we'll start today by looking at some different factors that can affect your implementation timeline for Marketo. So the first one is the if you have a new CRM and a new Marketo instance. In this scenario, your implementation may be straightforward, um, but you still need to make many different decisions. So for example, you would need to know what campaigns you'd like to begin with, or do you have enough content for nurturing? In the next scenario, this is where you may have an existing CRM and then a new Marketo instance. So with this, there is this added complexity with data mapping and a sync. And some of the questions here that you'll have to have answered are, what fields are necessary to be mapped to Marketo? And how should the sync work? Then there's another level, so that's migration from an existing Marketo automation or, or any marketing automation platform to the CRM. And this is where you will have to consider data cleansing, customization, as well as migration of those campaigns. So some questions are, you know, what do you need to migrate? Is there campaigns, assets, or forms? And what can you start from scratch when you're rebuilding in your new Marketo instance? There's also this element of the level of marketing automation maturity here. And it's important to work with your agency to understand what level you're at. So to give some context to that, we'll look at the four different levels. And I'll go through some distinctive characteristics in each of these phases and levels. The first one is you would basically be sending basic email sends, point in time campaigns, newsletters, 
You may have some forms on your website that are integrated as well. And then you'll have basic reporting. So maybe you're looking at opens and clicks on some of your email sends. As we move along, we look at uh, different campaigns such as scoring, as well as event programs, webinar programs that are integrated using different platforms into the marketing automation tool. You'll also probably have a nurture strategy at this point where you're sending out regular nurture emails through a program. And then level three. So this is where the lead life cycle is in place. And it means that you have an excellent understanding of everyone in your instance and what buyer stage they are in. So you must have to have, have alignment with sales if you're reaching this level of marketing automation maturity. And then finally, level four. So you're really maximizing all of Marketo's features here. You have this clear understanding of all program objectives and you're able to report on marketing generated revenue. So that's where we're maximizing all the features that Marketo has. So this will help to provide a starting point and you'll be able to know what level you're at and it will affect your implementation timeline. Now we'll go into the four phases of the Marketo implementation and that's where I'll hand it to Chelsea. Thanks, Hillary. So the first phase we're gonna talk about is ready, set, don't go yet. And in this phase, you may be thinking, what have we gotten ourselves into? You're looking down at the path of implementing this new software and it can look overwhelming. But the good news is that you can actually start quite a bit of work before you even sign your contract. And you can make several key decisions in advance of your implementation uh, to really make the most out of your first 100 days. So first, it's really important to align expectations across your organization. Um, everyone needs to understand that there is a phased approach. Um, it's not going to happen in a day or a week or even a month. Um, and certain tools will be down for a period of time while you're rebuilding your instance or even building an instance from scratch. So along those same lines, uh, you'll want to call out ahead of time that cross-departmental involvement will be vital when you launch Marketo. Um, you'll need a point of contact uh, for your agency that's assisting with your implementation. The great part about working with an agency is they can do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Um, so you can continue uh, with business as usual. As we know, regular day-to-day -day tasks don't stop just because we get another huge project on our laps. So an agency can definitely assist with that, but they will need a point of contact who they can direct questions to. Um, you'll also need um, Marketo champions uh, who understand the potential of the tool, are excited about it, and are ready to jump in and learn how to use it. Uh, members of your sales team uh, to pilot certain sales enablement tools can be crucial for adoption, and you'll absolutely need an IT person to assist with the CRM integration someone internal who can train team members and document new processes will also be uh, very helpful in setting your team up for long-term success. So another decision you'll need to make is if you want to use a Marketo sandbox. Um, there's definitely pros and cons of using a sandbox and determining a need for one is really unique to each business. So some of the pros are you can test Marketo programs before go live. You can test the flow of data between your Marketo sandbox and your CRM sandbox. And you can also test the backend process builders and workflow rules in your CRM to see if there's any impact on your programs or data. Um, with that being said, some of the cons of using a sandbox is that it does come at a higher cost investment and you can also expect that it will lengthen the time of your implementation. It would be fair to say that um, it could lengthen anywhere from two to six weeks, depending on if any issues are found and need to be troubleshooted. 
And lastly, there could also be some unforeseen differences between the sandbox instances and live instances, just based on different user roles, workflow rules, and other settings that seem extremely minor and you might not even know they're there, but they could have major um, impact on your data. Um, another uh, helpful thing you can do to get started is cleaning up your data so that you're only loading good data into your new Marketo instance. Some big items are cleaning up duplicate records and junk data or data that's uh, missing email addresses. Um, you can also create a data dictionary, which is something that we do at Percuto all the time and find extremely helpful. It's where you document every field in your CRM and identify which fields you want to sync to Marketo and define what those sync rules are. So uh, figuring all that out early will make for a much easier um, technical implementation. So lastly, uh, setting up a new Marketo instance is a great time to take a close look at the various compliance regulations such as GDPR, CASEL, and the California Consumer Privacy Act. If you haven't already, uh, you should audit your current data processes to see if you have the proper steps in place um, to capture and document consent from your audience. Of course, if this is something that you would like help with, an agency can certainly share best practices for compliance. So those are all the items in phase one. Uh, just to recap, uh, aligning expectations among stakeholders, defining rules for marketing ops and Marketo users, deciding if a Marketo sandbox would be beneficial for your organization, clean your data and create a data dictionary, and understand compliance policies and requirements. So that will take us to phase two. So I'll hand it back to Hillary. All right, so now let's get technical. In this stage, you may have this feeling, oh, we have a long way to go, just like when you're on this part of the roller coaster ride. But the agency that you're working with should provide you those technical setup instructions and guidance to your IT team. One of the first steps is to deploy the Munchkin. So the Munchkin is Marketo's custom JavaScript tracking code, and it tracks all individuals who visit your website with a cookie, and it even tracks anonymous visitors along with their IP addresses and additional information. Your IT team will be responsible or your website administrator to place this tracking code onto your website before the head tag and then your agency will be able to test to see if it's working. The next is email and landing page configuration. So this is another task for IT and it's all about email deliverability. Your IT team will have to add email and landing page DNS entries, as well as create a sender policy framework and a custom DKIM setup. So both of these steps are for authentication protocols that basically what happens is email receivers use these to determine if an email message is sent by who it says it's sent by. So we need to make sure that we have these steps in place so that you get the most out of your first email sends and to make sure nothing ends up in the spam folders. At Percudo, we provide a technical document that has the setup steps for an IT team. So it provides some guidance on what they need to do here with this configuration. And then CRM integration and sync. So this is a big one. Uh, it can definitely vary in the amount of time it takes depending on if you currently have an active CRM or if you're just starting out. But we um, work on the CRM integration with these five different steps. So first is defining your use cases. And this is where we define the marketing and sales use cases for data transfer between the two different systems. So for example, handing off marketing leads to sales, targeting and segmenting marketing audience based on the CRM data, 
as well as maybe personalizing marketing communications based on certain CRM objects. So this is how we know which fields and objects to sync from your CRM into Marketo. And then the data dictionary. So as Chelsea mentioned earlier, the data dictionary is critical here for the CRM integration, but you may have already set it up in phase one, which means you're ahead. So we use that data dictionary to then create a CRM profile and different testing scenarios. After that, we integrate either directly to live or to sandbox and run through the test to make sure that data is flowing seamlessly and that it's all correct. One tip from us is that we do always recommend this one-to-one -one sync. And it, the reason being is it truly helps with sales and marketing alignment, as well as reduces the chance of duplicates and other data inconsistencies between the two different tools. Then setting up Marketo users and roles. So this is where you set, edit, and create different permissions for the people that will be using Marketo at your organization. And there's different levels of, of use that people will have. So for example, a marketing user might need access to every element in the application, whereas a web designer only needs access to maybe the design studio to create emails and landing pages. So you can decide the members on your team and then grant access to your team accordingly. And then IP warming. So it's worth it to mention early on to decide if you need this. If you are planning on sending more than 100,000 emails a month, um, you might want to consider purchasing a dedicated IP. And the dedicated IP is for email deliverability and security with Marketo. But if you have a dedicated IP, you do have to factor in this warm-up process. So that means that over a period of the first five days when you begin sending emails, you'll have to do it staggered uh, and not send more than 50,000 messages a day and then follow these guidelines here. So it's something to consider when you're purchasing Marketo if this is something you'd like and then you plan for extra time when you first start sending from Marketo. So to go through the recap of the Let's Get Technical stage, we have deploy the Munchkin, email and landing page domain configuration, CRM integration and sync, set up Marketo users and roles, and then decide if you need IP warming. And I'll pass it back to Chelsea now. Yeah, so that takes us to phase three, which is prioritize and organize. And this is the building phase of your implementation. So this is when you'll actually start building your instance. And I think that this is where the exciting part of the ride begins. So as you're setting up your instance, um, there's quite a bit of strategy involved in how you organize your instance and teaming up with an agency will definitely set you up for success. Um, the folder structure of your instance is similar to a paper filing system. If your filing system is messy and you have test papers mixed in with your important documents, it will be extremely confusing in the long run. Um, along those same lines, um, the naming conventions of all your programs is important for organization of your instance, but also reporting. And at agencies like Percuto, we have seen hundreds, if not thousands of instances, and we know what's easy to work in and what's not easy to work in. And we can definitely share insight with you about how your instance should be organized to keep things efficient, but also easy for your team to come in and be trained on your instance and adopt it. Um, an agency will not only help with the quality of your implementation, but it will also move your implementation along so much faster. And a big factor in this is providing program templates and design templates. Program templates done the right way are extremely scalable because they leverage tokens, which are custom variables in programs and folders. 
So you can set up your instance with universal tokens at the top level that will be inherited by all of your folders and programs underneath. And your universal tokens can have standard values like your company website, your subscription center link, um, the copyright year, et cetera. And your tokens will get more granular at the program level um, with tokens like email subject line and CTA URLs and so forth. So these tokens can also be incorporated into your email and landing page templates, and this will save you an incredible amount of hours in the long run as you continue to build out your campaigns in your instance. Um, so next, choosing your most important marketing initiatives. Um, you can't really expect to come out of the gate with an implementation and launch all of your programs at once. So based on your previous marketing automation practices, you should decide what marketing initiatives are most important for you to get up first. If you previously had a nurture program running and all of your content is ready, um, perhaps nurturing is your top priority. Or if in your business you run a lot of paid digital advertising and this is extremely important for your lead generation, then this could be your top priority. Your program priority list will be completely unique to your business and it will guide you through what to build out first. So next, um, another important item in this phase. Uh, Hillary, can we go to the next slide, please? Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Get stuck there. Yeah, I think we're good now. I think we're good. Um, so next, uh, defining your lead source strategy. So reporting on revenue attribution is a wonderful feature of Marketo and your process of reporting will need to be built into your instance framework. Deciding early on if you want to set up multi-touch or single-touch attribution will guide your operational program builds. So working with an agency um, really eases this process. Um, Percuto certainly shares best practices of setting up a lead source strategy and also creating the architecture that best suits your business needs. And lastly, in phase three, you'll want to invest in training for your team and train your team as your instance is being built. So the program templates that we went over are extremely powerful, but the people running your system will need to learn how to use them and how to leverage tokens. So to recap phase three, um, we'll be deciding on folder structures and naming conventions choosing your most important marketing initiatives, determining what templates your agency will provide, defining your lead source strategy, and also investing in training for your team. So that brings us to the fourth and final phase. So I'll pass it back to Hillary. Okay, so time to go live and thrive. And this is the launch phase. And sometimes you'll think this is actually fun when you're on a roller coaster. And that's how this phase feels. The first step is launching your first campaigns. This can feel a bit scary, but the reality is that with your agency QA in your work, you'll have the confidence required to know that you are targeting the right people as well as there's no errors in your email sends. And we recommend having something internal, like a pre launch checklist. So everyone on your team can go through the steps required in order to send an email. This photo here is a screenshot of a QA grid that we would use at Percuto. So we document every element of the email and we have the builder who's building an email check to make sure it's right. And then we have a QA person to be able to see if it's a pass or fail and look carefully at each element in the email. If your marketing operations team doesn't have this clear and documented QA process, you are taking a risk every time one of your marketers hits that send button. So we really recommend setting this up and launching your first campaigns to 
in this way to reduce the chance of errors and improve communication with your team. And you'll also be able to begin measuring success with different reports after you launch. So you can start pulling reports on different campaigns to see the effectiveness. There's several types of basic reports in Marketo from web page activity to people performance and campaign activity reports as well. You also have the option in Marketo to set up revenue cycle analytics, which is an advanced reporting tool, or even maybe to implement Visible for multi-touch attribution. Working with your agency, you'll help decide what type of advanced reporting tools match your level of marketing automation maturity and what your roadmap really looks like for your future for the best match with your business. And then we get to lead scoring in this phase. So you potentially may have had a lead scoring model in your previous tool, but then it's a great time to rework it. Lead scoring is a combination of behavior score, so what that person does, demographic score, who a person is, and then the total is the sum of what that person does and who the person is. You're able to score leads um, in order to show the interest that they have in your business, the current place they are in the buying cycle, as well as their fit regards to your business too. And this helps you really determine which leads you should move to further email nurturing or which leads you should pass to sales. So the first step here when you're developing personas is to determine your factors for behavioral score and demographic score. So the way to do this is to take a look at any of your past customers and one opportunities. So what do they have in common? Your team should identify the basic demographic data of people who buy from you. So this is factors like company size, geography, job title, industry, and maybe something even very specific to your business like number of vehicles they own or location of their headquarters. So that will account for demographic scoring. And then we think about behavior. So what did prospects do throughout the sales process that led to them becoming a customer. So by reviewing these past activities, such as the web pages that they have visited, emails they have clicked in the past, or the number of times they spoke to a sales rep, your team can determine behavioral data that matters. And then we really start thriving when we have lead scoring and a lead life cycle in place. So this is an example of a simple lead life cycle with a success path of the stages that someone goes through um, to become a customer. You can see that a lead life cycle is this trackable flow of leads on, of your marketing and sales funnels, and it's a reflection of those buyer stages. You use lead scoring with your lead life cycle to determine what stages people are in. And what we recommend starting out with a lead life cycle, or even if you're redoing one because you now have a new Marketo instance, is to start documenting your descriptions. So we always have a data description as well as a business description for each of these stages. This is where sales and marketing alignment is crucial. Your sales team needs to have the same understanding of all these key terms as your marketing team does. So what does an MQL really mean? There's the general description and then the criteria, the data description. So for example here, a marketing qualified lead is a lead who has filled out one of the MQL forms. You might want to do something like that. It's very specific about a form fill out. And then the criteria is what happens in the system to trigger that MQL event to occur. You do this for all of your different stages as well as any recycled stages. 
and then you make sure there's alignment and then you go forward with building it out. And then advanced nurturing. So there's many different strategies in Marketo that you can use for nurturing. Um, when I say advanced nurturing, I'm starting to talk about being very granular about each email that is sent out and the control over who receives it. So you can see this screenshot of a default program in Marketo that has A-B testing functionality and the ability to exclude certain people based on data criteria in Marketo that shouldn't receive this piece of email. We can start putting these pieces of email content in our nurturing program um, and have that much control over who receives each piece and how they interact with it. Some of these different advanced nurturing strategies are accelerators. So you're using your life cycle, you're knowing where every person is in that buyer's journey, and then you're using relevant nudges based on very specific buyer behaviors to accelerate them through the funnel, get them to the next stage. Similar to lead life cycle nurturing, so you might be able to say, I want to indicate if someone is maybe not quite ready yet to be a pass to sales, let's nurture them a bit farther farther based on these factors and then move them to the next stage. So being very intentional with how you use lead life cycle and then mapping content to it. We also have wake the dead. So after you use Marketo for a while and you're able to see who has been maybe inactive for the last six months, you can come with a nurturing strategy to re-engage these people. And if they don't re-engage, decide that you'll stop emailing them entirely to preserve your deliverability. So that's all for phase four, go live and thrive. So we have launch your first campaigns, begin measuring success with reports, develop personas for lead scoring, thrive with lead scoring and the lead life cycle, and then thrive with advanced nurturing. So at the end of a roller coaster ride, you always get a result, which is to see your photo of how you look during that ride. But don't worry, working with an agency, you hopefully won't have any of these faces at the end of this implementation process. And just like at the end of the roller coaster where you get a photo to take away, we also wanted to offer you a takeaway at the end of this webinar. So be sure to check out uh, in your email because you'll receive this Marketo Implementation Success Checklist that recaps this webinar and will help you when you're implementing the tool. So now it's time for Q&A. Yeah, thanks, Hillary. Um, actually, there's gonna be a lot of Q&A, um, quite a few questions, so um, I'll just try and get through Please. as many as we can. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure we if we can get through questions. all of them. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see how far we can get. Um, okay, first question here. Uh, let's go with this one from Charles. And I know that you um, touched on it a little bit in the presentation, but the question is, what about visible instead of or in addition to Revenue Explorer? Any thoughts? Yes, <laughs> I can take this one. So okay. we are big fans of visible here at Percudo. We have many customers we implement it for. And visible is, gauging when you're ready for visible is knowing where you are on your attribution journey. So have you thought through how lead sources are going to be captured? And then you can build on that further with visible. We, we really like the advanced reporting it offers and we've been seeing a lot of success with it. Um, and you can add that on after you have Marketo implemented as maybe a phase two. Yes, I, I agree with that, that taking visible implementation on at the same time that you do Marketo implementation um, would definitely um, be a lot, but a phase two 
sounds like a great approach. Okay, great. Uh, next question here. Let's see. Um, okay, this must be referring to one of the slides. It says, could the item of defining your lead source strategy actually start in phase one? It seems like the strategy can begin before we have our instance, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I think that would really depend on your level of marketing automation maturity. Um, if you have gone through any of these processes before um, and all of these items in our phases, you know, these are suggestions and um, I think depending on your business needs and certain aspects that are unique to your, you know, marketing team, um, they can be moved around a bit. Um, so, yes, I think that coming up with your lead source strategy in phase one, if it feels doable to you, absolutely. Okay, thanks for that. Um, next question. What is your recommendation for connecting multiple CRM instances to a single Marketo instance? Yeah, so if you are using the native connector, you can only connect one instance, one CRM. So it adds this extra level of complexity if you want to try to do some sort of customization with multiple CRMs. We see a lot of benefit of choosing to use a, da a data layer like um, tool that will consolidate different CRMs together first and then integrate. And so I would do some research on which data layer tool could help for you. Okay, good. Mm. Um, next question, what's the number one factor in deciding if we need a sandbox? Yeah, so for a sandbox, it's really to talk to your IT team about their security, level of security and comfortability they have with testing. Um, a lot of organizations we see require a sandbox to test the CRM integration. And then um, also the level of complexity you'll have with your CRM sync. So if it's, you know, your data dictionary is many, many fields that will be synced over, we think there's a lot of benefit of having a sandbox to test that integration. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, you guys talked about agencies a lot. What factors should I consider um, when deciding which agency to partner with for the implementation? Oh, yeah, um, I can speak to that because I actually um, was a client of Perquitos before I joined the team. And I remember um, when we brought on an agency to help, um, we really looked a lot at like online reviews, especially G2 Crowd. And in this space of marketing technology, there's a big online presence and, you know, on these online review websites and even just LinkedIn, like uh, agencies have reputations. So I would just do your homework and um, check to see what the reputation is. And also just talking um, to somebody at the agency and having, having that discovery meeting just to see if, um, it's a right cultural fit if they seem like personalities you gel with. Um, and actually, I think um, we have a blog on perquito.com about this process. So if this is something that you want to look more into, definitely check out that blog about um, how to choose an agency, and that can give you some more information as well. Okay, thanks for that. Um, another question here, what about DMARC, D-M-A-R-C, is it necessary? Yeah, so we also consider that um, a level of authentication protocol that is recommended. Uh, we have that in our IT setup steps as well, yes. Okay, great. Um, okay, yep, one more here. What is the typical amount of time it takes to have a new instance completely up and running, start to finish? So it definitely does um, look back. We would like to consider those implementation timeline factors. But in those 100 days, it's definitely doable to be deploying your first email, which is really exciting. 
we think of it the more complex an organization has in their requirements it's really an ongoing process for the implementation by the three to six month mark that's where we'll start working on lead scoring and lead life cycle and then maybe it's up to a year working with an agency to have every complex implementation if you have extra tools that you're needing to integrate as part of Marketo launched. Um, and it's just really, there's no point in time when you're like completely done with Marketo because the power of the tool is that it's honestly never ending. It's just, you can achieve more and more with it once you get the basics and the solid foundation done. Okay, I think we're actually all out of questions. Thanks, um, Hillary. Thanks, Chelsea. Um, for taking us through that today. Um, as I mentioned, after the call today, um, either later today or tomorrow, we'll send out an email um, with a link to the recording, the slides, as well as that um, implementation checklist that was mentioned. So watch your emails for that. Um, and also watch your emails for upcoming webinars. Uh, of course, we'll be doing this again next month. So we hope to have you all with us again. So Hillary, um, Chelsea, thanks for joining us and speak to you all sometime in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye.